Hi and welcome to Projects and Things. My name's Eve. This week we're going to make a cabinet with this beautiful stained glass door that I found that was actually going to go into the trash. It also comes with two drawers that were hand carved and we're going to make an upright standing cabinet that will end up in my living room. The stained glass door and the drawers came from the house of a friend of mine. He was emptying it out and these things were going to go into the trash and I'm very happy I saved them. I was inspired by a British artist called Rupert Blanchard and he makes similar cabinets like this so I thought I'd give it a try. I removed the old hardware which I was going to use later. These old drawers were quite banged up, so I decided to take them apart and make them fit the new cabinet. They were all different sizes, so I ended up first cutting the fronts to the same width and then later making the drawer behind it fit. So my trick turned out rather well. Uh, I've now been able to match the width of these drawer fronts to the width of the door. So this means that I now should be able to make one long thin cabinet where all the pieces fit the way I have it in my head. And the next step is to make these drawers the right depth so that they fit into the new cabinet because they were a lot bigger in the old cabinet it came from. So let's do that. So after cutting all these pieces to size, I'm essentially left with two building packages to make two new drawers. They're all the original side pieces. The only thing I actually made was one extra piece out of thin plywood that I'm gonna use to attach the front to these drawers. All that's left is to glue them up and then on to the next step. And to hold these drawers in place while the glue dries, I'm going to use some tiny nails, which will require a tiny hammer that I borrowed from my son's toolkit. Using a nail as my drill bit, I pre-drilled all the holes to be used later. And then I attached the body of the drawer with glue and small nails. And a similar thing happened for the bottom of the drawer. I cut it to size and just slid it back into its original place. Using wood glue and two screws, I attached the front to the one new piece I had to cut for this drawer to fit. So the next 
next part was to cut the slots in which the shelves were going to sit because I wanted to minimize the use of screws in this build. everything coming together with wood glue and clamps. And the clamp in this case is a ratchet strap that I have in my car. I put the old door back in while the glue dried for the cabinet to hold its shape. Then I flipped it over and put the backing in place. So now I've marked all the spots where the backer board is going to meet the cabinet and now we're going to attach it with glue and tiny nails. Uh -huh. So, I realized I messed up here at the front of the cabinet. I forgot to cut a slot in which the top was going to fit. So now if I put glue on it, there's not much surface to hold on to. So I basically cut down um, my top shelf on the table saw and I used some pocket holes. And with the pocket holes and glue, I can attach the top so it won't fall down and crush all the nice things we're going to put into it. So now my current plan is to fit this in here and attach it. And I've added some spacers here on the bottom that are going to simulate where the door's gonna come so the shelf doesn't fall down too far. Voila. So that actually worked. It doesn't look super awesome right now, but the good thing with these holes is you don't see them from the inside. And this is going to be the very top of the cabinet. I don't even think I'm ever gonna paint this. It's gonna be high up against the roof. Just gonna collect some dust. This cabinet is going to be lit up by LED lights from the inside and in order to give these LED lights a place to live, I attached a lip to the bottom of each of the shelves. Okay, so at this stage the glue is dry and the next step to do is to caulk all the seams and for that I'm going to use one of these gun thingies and painter's caulk. And then it's time to give it a coat of primer. The next step before I can paint this thing is putting the drawers in place. 
They used to just slide in, just the drawer slid into an opening, but now I want it to go a lot smoother. So I went out and bought two pairs of drawer slides that I'm going to mount to this thing and then into the cabinet. Okay, so far, so good. The final thing I wanna do before I start painting is actually add one more strip of wood in between here, so it looks kinda of more finished. So let's test that right now. And the thing I actually messed up was when I was screwing the guides on the back of this shelf, I actually had them backwards. So off camera, I flip them the right way around and now these things slide in and out. So with this done, it's on to painting. My son decided that he wanted to help out. So I let him attack the primer phase of this project. So the first coat of gray is now on the cabinet and I have one thing left to paint and that's this open cubby right here under the bottom shelf uh, drawer. I'm going to paint it in sort of spring green. I had some lying around and I hope it's gonna look good. If not, I'll just paint over it. So uh, experimentation time. These LED strips are going to light up the cabinet from the inside and the good thing is you can cut these every meter with a pair of pliers and they will still work. and then I attach them to the lip of the shelves using super glue. Using a laser level, I made sure the cabinet was straight. Here you can see the power line that feeds the LED tubes.
The final installation of the stained glass door I actually did in my living room, so I didn't have to move the cabinet with the glass in it from my workshop to my house. Haha, uh -huh. it's finally a thing. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. The lead light and the color of the glass is a good thing. The downside is it took a lot longer than I actually thought this would take. But hey, you win some, you lose some. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you like these things I do, then please consider subscribing. There's a button to do so below. And also on my one of my sides, there will be other videos all about making things. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time, bye.